I just want to worry a bit about that dichotomy about, about judgments in, in, in the moral case. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I can imagine somebody saying that, OK, an alternative to the two options you give would be something like, well, we will, uh, we will blame people, we will hold people morally responsible, we'll, we'll punish people, whatever, if, they are, if we have credence higher than 0.994 uh -huh. or something like that. Um, and regarding that as being, well, depending how you looked at it, either a better theoretical analysis of the way our justice model actually works mm -hmm. or, alternately, a better way it should work. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem as if, the, as if the, 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 the person who just wants to be monist about credence is obliged mm -hmm. to only accept the expected utility version that you're talking about. Right, yeah. So, so clearly that's not the only version. You might have some version in which um, you... Uh, once you reach a threshold of credence, you assign blame. Um, but that's going to uh, that's going to run up against these problems with statistical evidence because those are the cases. And so, you know, in the case in which um, the person uh, we have sort of very high credence that Jake stole the iPhone, but since it's just based on statistical evidence, we don't have belief. It seems like in those kinds of cases we're not going to um, judge the person, even though sure. uh, we do have high green. But, yeah. but, I mean, but I mean, you could argue that, well, you, you could argue either that um, actually when, we have, when, when those statistics get up to kind of you know, 0.998 or something, mm -hmm. we do in fact get convicted or whatever, or you could say that we should do. You, you could say, well, look, it's a, a human failing in our, in our system that it over-prioritizes things like testimony and personal claims, that this, this just reflects failings in the way we think about the, the, the justice framework and, and I mean you, you see some of these cases coming up in practical places where we, you see audiences and judges not being well plugged into various right. kind of statistical competence and you, right. you could so, just call it a failing. So one exa example is that like uh, people tend to be bad at taking base rates into account so that's like something that you might think um, our legal system in fact should be better at but it seems a very large revision to think that if we if all we have is evidence about um, this class of people, then we ought to punish them as long as like there's a high enough correlation between being in that class and having done that thing. And I think so one thought is like we just ought to really bulk at that. But I think in addition, we can explain it in a way that we maybe couldn't explain um, couldn't sort of justify the like over reliance on uh, eyewitness testimony, namely that we think there's got to be some uh, important relationship between the evidence I have for someone's guilt and my judgment of them. Them and maybe like the way I've suggested we could cash it out is that um, if the person is in fact guilty, then like they caused the evidence to be there. But maybe there are some some other ways of cashing that out. I wonder how some of what you've been saying bears on the notion of explanation. Um, I mean, one sort of question is, uh, to have evidence for a hypothesis, does that mean that the hypothesis explains that evidence? Mm -hmm. um, which would seem to suggest that the explanatory relation be becomes a bit too early for you, because you, you start off with, and if you have your last slide up, perhaps we can see that. Right, because you, whether a particular bit of information is evidence for God's existence, so that would seem to suggest that the explanatory relation has to somehow be in place before we decide whether or not it's an issue of raising credence or whether it's a matter of belief. And the related question is, I mean, do we have to believe that God exists in order to think that God could be explanatory? If you had a Van Frassen-style account of explanation, presumably one doesn't. Uh, but perhaps one has to have credence in a proposition to believe it, for it to be explanatory. Uh, do you have any comments on this? Yeah, questions? no, yeah. So I, um, here's maybe a good way to put it. A bit of evidence can raise your credence in a hypothesis without the hypothesis necessarily being explanatory of that evidence, just because of the sort of probability uh, relations uh, it could just be the case that that bit of evidence confirms the hypothesis by uh, raising its probability. So in the case of like, um, we would have the, the fact of um, there being a, uh, this, this statistic about how many buses there are confirms the hypothesis that it was a blue bus, but like that it was a blue bus just doesn't explain 
the uh, fact of the statistical evidence. On the other hand, in the case of belief, you might think that um, explanation is more fundamental to the relationship between uh, belief and evidence. So you might, and I don't want to commit to this because I think I haven't actually thought about this question in exactly those terms, but you might think that um, a belief can only, or a, a bit of evidence can only count uh, in favor of believing a hypothesis if the hypothesis is um, part of the explanation for that, uh, that belief, or some, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't thought about the second part as much as the first part, so it yeah, could yeah, be that yeah, there's yeah. this obvious counterexample. That... So one clearly can have credence without belief. Presumably yeah. then, can one have belief without credence? Um, so, right, so, like, question is, are there some, um, maybe there aren't sufficient conditions for uh, credence to give rise to belief, but are there necessary conditions? For example, mm -hmm. could we have um, credence of, 0.01 and still believe something. And it, it seems like actually the answer is yes. And this is like typical of um, say like what, uh, what a historian does in putting together uh, a book uh, is to make a lot of different claims maybe taken in together they have low credence just because like there's so many claims. But um, in fact, uh, they tell a really coherent story, and that's partly why the historian believes them. If you know what you think a historian is doing is in writing a history book is like uh, expressing like agreement with those claims in some way that that counts as as belief. Um, some have suggested that a similar thing holds of scientific hypotheses that uh, you know many uh, the sort of claims in any particular uh, part of any particular theory taken together are not going to have a very high, high credence. I'm not sure I would actually uh, want to agree with that because I'm actually not sure that we need belief in science. I think that like credence should be the primary way that we think about science. But um, mm -hmm. to sort of short answer to your question, right. yes, yeah, I think right, we right, can. Right. I mean, I'm reminded of Einstein's belief that general relativity is true regardless of the outcome of Eddington's <laughs> <laughs> test. <laughs> he had perhaps belief regardless of credence. Um, well, I think we're, I don't see any other. So we are past our time. So let's thank our speaker again for a modest <laughs> <thing. clears throat>